Hi everyone, welcome back to the Heterogeneous Parallel Programming class. We are at our last lecture of the, uh, the course, lecture 8.5, Conclusions and Future Directions. First of all, I'd like to take you through um, all the, um, the weeks that we have been through for this course. In week one, we introduced heterogeneous parallel program, uh, computing. We did an overview of CUDA-C and kernel-based parallel programming. In the lab, uh, we have you go through the, a, a quick tour of the web GPU lab and the assignment of vector addition in CUDA-C. In week two, we, uh, we work on, uh, we discuss memory model for locality, tiling for conserving memory bandwidth, handling boundary conditions, and performance considerations. In the lab, we had to work on a simple and tiled matrix multiplication in CUDA-C. In week three, we uh, discussed memory bandwidth, and um, we, uh, we showed parallel convolution pattern, and then we, uh, we discussed how we can do data um, reuse analysis. In the programming assignment, we had the image convolution in CUDA-C. In week four, we have parallel reduction and scan patterns. And um, uh, we, we learned how to analyze control divergence and improve on control divergence through uh, the work uh, the thread to data uh, index assignment uh, tricks. And then uh, we, uh, we also discuss work efficiency analysis. In the lab, we have you work on uh, the parallel list reduction in CUDA-C. In week five, we had uh, the parallel histogram pattern, and uh, we introduce atomic operations and uh, uh, privatization as an optimization to reduce content, uh, contention and serialization in a um, histogram kind of, kind of uh, uh, pattern. And then we have you work on the uh, assignment of parallel scan in uh, CUDA-C. In week six, we, uh, we discuss data transfer, task parallelism, and um, how we can overlap computation and communication. And uh, we, uh, in the lab, we had to work on the parallel histogram in CUDA-C. In week seven, we introduced you to OpenCL, a re closely related programming model, but uh, with more portability. However, you pay the cost of more tedious, uh, error-prone uh, host code uh, sequences. And in, we also introduce you to OpenACC, which is a higher level programming model where the compiler does a lot of the uh, the, the, um, the kernel preparation and so on. However, in order to use that programming model, you really need to have a very good understanding of the concepts that we introduced with CUDA-C. And then the programming assignment uh, was vector addition using streams in CUDA-C. In week eight, uh, we introduced you to C++ AMP, and we are uh, doing the course summary today. And um, uh, in the lab, we start the bonus programming assignment in, uh, in, in the choice of OpenCL, C++ AMP, and OpenACC. In week nine, um, we will not have any more uh, lectures, but uh, it's really time for you to complete any remaining lab assignments with optional bonus programming assignments in the choice of OpenCL, C++ AMP, and OpenACC. So um, within those these nine weeks, um, the focus of the course, as you can uh, to see now is really to teach you a set of major skills. We start with CUDA C programming and mostly data and task parallelism. And then uh, we, talk, we discuss the parallel programming fundamentals. All the, um, all the patterns are used to introduce some very fundamental concepts in parallel programming that are applicable not just to CUDA C, but uh, in pretty much all types of parallel programming. And then uh, we have uh, we introduced tiled algorithms with boundary check uh, condition checking. We have convolution pattern with halo handling and uh, tiling efficiency. We have uh, reduction pattern and, and uh, uh, scan pattern, and we discussed the concept of computational efficiency. And then uh, we uh, use the histogram pattern to introduce the need for atomic operations and uh, uh, privatization optimization. And uh, after we uh, we introduce all these uh, major parallel programming um, uh, skills based on CUDA C, we introduce you to OpenCL, OpenACC, and C++ AMP, so that you can apply um, any of these concepts 
uh, to the uh, to the any of these languages that uh, you might be using in your uh, in, in your research or in your um, uh, pro in your job. And we also uh, introduced uh, MPI just so that to give you a flavor of uh, the fact that MPI, even though it's uh, it's a language that is designed to uh, to program a very different type of uh, hardware configuration, but um, understanding CUDA uh, allows you to understand MPI very, very quickly. So um, this, uh, hopefully this uh, course has given you a very solid foundation for parallel programming, not only to enable you to use the, uh, the particular models that we introduce in this course to, um, to perform your research and um, uh, development, but uh, will also give you the foundation to understand any future parallel programming models that you may encounter very quickly. So um, there are some other related uh, parallel programming models that we did not have time to introduce. And um, uh, for example, CUDA actually has a CUDA Fortran uh, produced by uh, Portland Group. And uh, we, uh, we, NVIDIA introduced Thrust and AMD introduced BOT, which are uh, template-based uh, uh, high-level parallel programming based on CUDA and OpenCL. So uh, using these temp uh, template libraries, you can uh, actually increase your programming productivity quite a bit, especially after you understand all the major patterns that we introduce in the course. You should be able to use these um, uh, template libraries extremely uh, uh, effectively. And then uh, we have uh, TBB, thread, uh, Threading Building Block, and Silk uh, from Intel that uh, have uh, very nice CPU multi-core level kind of parallel programming. And uh, we have Eden and Trailate, which are functional programming uh, in, uh, models that allow us to program clusters um, with much more f uh, productivity than MPI. So these are all the pro parallel programming models that um, uh, you might encounter in the future that are closely related to the concepts that we introduce in the um, in this course, and you should be able to, uh, to learn them very quickly. So the question is, um, now that you have spent nine weeks uh, with this course, uh, if you really want to learn more, what are the, uh, the things that, uh, that you can do? And in fact, um, uh, hundreds of students who previously took this course asked this question uh, in the past. And um, so uh, we would like to offer you a, little, uh, a few pointers. One is uh, you can take a full semester course such as ECE 408. ECE 408 is a uh, is really the um, the superset of this uh, HPP course, and um, uh, we cover about 60 percent of ECE 408 in this course. And um, uh, what does not cover in this course are the applications, the case studies, and um, uh, uh, final projects. And um, so these are the kind of experience that are still hard to offer with the uh, you know with this kind of uh, uh, MOOC kind of uh, uh, infrastructure, and then uh, you could join TPUcomputing.net community. This is a very vibrant community with thousands of people who work on all aspects of GPU uh, uh, programming, GPU computing, and you will find thousands of papers. It essentially covers any of the subject areas that you might be interested in uh, when you uh, need uh, want to write a piece of GPU code. And um, you can join an open source project. There are many, many open source projects such as OpenCV and so on that uh, have a substantial amount of uh, heterogeneous par uh, parallel pro programming um, code. So um, with the skills that you learn in this course, if you could easily join one of these open source projects and um, contribute um, to the community and, and also continue to sharpen your skills. Um, you, if you're interested in doing more reading, there are two uh, readings that I'd like to encourage you to, uh, to continue to, uh, to, the, to, um, to pursue. One is you can read more chapters of this, uh, the textbook. And the second one is there are actually two uh, very nice collections of uh, papers that people have uh, written in uh, heterogeneous parallel programming, and uh, we call them uh, we call these two volumes GPU computing gems. And these are uh, concise writings about uh, uh, about researchers' experience um, using 
the um, using the, uh, the, the uh, GPUs in you know, heterogeneous parallel computing work uh, um, for real problems, and also the, the kind of tools and environments that people have been building for GPU computing. So uh, these two uh, volumes are the um, uh, Emerald Jade Edition and Emerald Edition, and um, they all together have about 90 uh, chapters of uh, you know deep experience but written in a way that is uh, accessible by non-experts in these particular domains. So um, we, you can certainly take a graduate level course such as the ECE 508, uh, formerly known as ECE 598HK at the University of Illinois. And um, uh, I'm going to say a few more about that course later on. You can uh, go and attend a VSCSE Virtual School of Computational Science Engineering Summer School that's uh, regularly held uh, at the University of Illinois, but uh, with about 10 satellite uh, sites with uh, high perform uh, uh, definition video links to allow uh, students to not to have to travel uh, to Urbana-Champaign in order to take this course in the summer. And that's typically offered in uh, August. And then uh, you can also uh, take a similar course, which is a pump summer school, which is the EU version of the VSE summer school that we uh, hold uh, regularly on a yearly basis in Barcelona. So for those of you who are interested in uh, pushing uh, forward for more advanced uh, parallel algorithm um, uh, uh, knowledge, I'd uh, like to encourage you to, you know what, to, to uh, learn, uh, pursue more knowledge about what that, uh, the kind of algorithm techniques that people uh, use in order to uh, to create create more scalable, higher performing um, code with heterogeneous parallel programming. And um, in uh, 2012, we uh, my research group published a, a paper, uh, an article in the IEEE Computer Magazine, and um, uh, it's called Algorithm and Data Optimization Techniques for Scaling to Massively Threaded Systems. So uh, this is a particular uh, article that outlines the uh, eight common uh, techniques that people use in order to uh, to, to make their uh, you know massively parallel program even more scalable and higher performance. So we already introduced uh, two of the concepts: tiling and uh, uh, privatization. And here we show the kind of um, problems that these techniques are designed to uh, to solve: contention for uh, memory. Um, uh, resources or uh, bandwidth consumption, uh, locality uh, or lack of locality if they're in, and um, efficiency, computational efficiency, load imbalance, and CPU leveraging. So uh, we only had time to introduce two of these techniques in uh, this course. However, if you take a ECE 408 or ECE 598HK course, you will be introduced to the rest of these techniques, regularization, compaction, binning, data layout transformation, thread coarsening, and um, uh, sc uh, scatter to gather transform conversion. So um, you, um, if you read this article, it will give you a fairly high level, quick introduction to each of these techniques. But uh, you can take a graduate level course, or even as a compromise, uh, one of the two summer courses, VSCSE summer course or the, the uh, PUMPS summer course, you will be exposed to a week-long uh, treatment of these kind of subjects. So this is a quick um, so, uh, introduction to the PUMPS summer school, and this was the 2013, and um, uh, we, uh, I think the site will be open for application very soon this year. And um, it's a fantastic summer school with about 100 students each year. Um, uh, it's always um, uh, registered to capacity, and um, only about half of the students can can, can get in. And um, uh, it's a beautiful, you know, beautiful set, set, set up in uh, Barcelona and uh, uh, near the Barcelona Supercomputing Center. BSE's uh, summer school. The, um, you, this is typically in August every year in Urbana-Champaign in the uh, National uh, uh, NCSA building, and uh, with ten about 10 satellite sites to allow students to take them from all over the US. And um, uh, this summer school is, in the, uh, is very near the Blue Waters machine that uh, we introduced in an NPI uh, lecture. So um, these are all the venues that you can easily pursue 
to, um, to further your knowledge in heterogeneous parallel programming. So um, at this point, um, we are uh, really at the closing of the course. I'd like to encourage you to work on optional MPs, work on as many projects as you can to sharpen your techniques. And um, uh, you know, we'll, we would be uh, happy to give you extra credit for each of these optional MPs. And um, uh, also, I'd like to uh, uh, ask you to take a survey to help us to identify any um, improvements that we should be making before we uh, 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 offer this course uh, next time. And there was a whole year of delay between the previous offering and this uh, offering of the course, where we actually did uh, went over a lot of the feedback from the previous stu uh, students and improved the course for you to uh, have a better experience. And um, uh, the once uh, uh, we since we're at the very end of the course, I'd like to really thank uh, several several uh, several important. Uh, parties for uh, to make for uh, making this course possible. The first group of people are the uh, community TAs. These community TAs were top students from our previous offering, and they are they were volunteering their time to help you to get better learning experience. And um, I'd like to thank them deeply for all their hard work. And um, uh, I have been seeing, uh, you know, the uh, very timely posting to um, to answer your questions and uh, clarify uh, some of the material, or even uh, help us to identify errors and so on that we need to correct. So um, you know, this group of people are fantastic people that um, you know we, I really have been very proud to be able to uh, be associated with the community TA group. And the second one is the University of Illinois. Uh, teaching staff who have been helping uh, with this course, especially um, uh, uh, Abdul Dakak, uh, who has been uh, dealing with all kinds of um, web GPU um, you know, issues. And um, uh, the, he has been really work do, doing a fantastic job resolving the problems quickly and so on. And this is a volunteer job. He's actually not, um, you know, not, not being uh, rewarded for uh, financially for uh, his involvement, but he has been really doing a fantastic job, you know, what, uh, trying to make things better uh, for the students. And we have Andy Xu, who has been um, the, the, uh, coordinating all the weekly views and all the material and um, uh, uh, going back and forth between the community TAs and teaching staff. And um, uh, he has been uh, really a, a very important person in making the whole course work. And is that El Hajj, who has been helping me with all the um, all the course uh, quizzes and uh, slides and so on, and then uh, you know he is one of the uh, my senior PhD students who have tremendous passion for teaching, and he has been teaching some of the summer schools with me, and I really appreciate his help. And finally, um, the University of Illinois video team. Uh, this is a fantastic team, and it, uh, it's unbelievable how quickly and how well they have been producing these videos for uh, for you. And um, uh, I'd like to uh, you know uh, to to really thank them for all that uh, great professional service that they have so quickly provide to us every time um, we produce the, uh, these videos. So um, you know, all good things come to an end. And this is where we will be ending our uh, video lecture series. So um, I'd like to thank all of you for your hard work. And uh, I know that um, there is a lot of work involved in taking such a course. And we have seen tremendous um, progress that every one of you are making. We're seeing all kinds of statistics. But underneath the statistics, we see a group of really hardworking, bright people who are making uh, progress, uh, you know, but, uh, who are making outstanding uh, progress uh, in heterogeneous parallel programming. So um, I'd like to also encourage you to consider serving as community TAs for our future offering, so that you can um, you know, feed, you can feed your, uh, you can actually give some of the uh, the thing, the uh, knowledge that you learn back into the community and help future students. Thank you.